it is it is pretty crazy. But it seems that we are actually fairly ready to get in with the action. That should be jumping up fairly soon. It should be a good game once we jump into that. Snods, mm. kick himself on the first map here. How are you feeling about this is going to go? Train, I mean, speaking to the players, it felt like Endpoint were leaning more towards Cash Cobble. Okay. And obviously Reason Gaming, the mix that is formed from Excel, as you can see, they're not allowed to wear their jerseys, of course. So those players with the jerseys are from other teams. So still from great teams within the UK. But they wanted more train overpass overpass being banned by endpoint reason yeah. uh, banning out cash which means reason game is train is still here endpoint's cash is still here but it's the last map that's crucial endpoint picked mirage they, well, actually no endpoint picked train sorry and then of course reason picked mirage i feel like actually in terms of the veto reason may have won it anyway they are going live into this one cray being the support player in this regard buying the smoke and diffuse kit and then for the side of endpoint it's going to be smoke double flashbang on flash and smoke flash P250 on enemy. The question is, how are they going to utilize that? Let's see though, Max, YNC, and Stanley, I believe, close towards Alice Cray, peeks out. Cray, hold the angle right now, just waiting for the push to come towards him over at Ivy. So do a little bit of garden, a bit of trimming, and uh, cut them down. Oh, does try and go for the first contact. His attack fairly effectively. Fry as well, though, up to his old tricks. As Zimmy will fall, Stanley follows suit, leaving it on Mighty Max, YNC, and Fasher. YNC will claim one frag, but it swiftly goes back in the favor of Reason. They get the opening round off the raw skill. And this is the issue we spoke about for Endpoint. On paper, Endpoint should be winning the event, hands down. When you think of the competition, okay, we saw how, just regarding what happened today, CX versus Fish One Two Three Land Finals UK Masters. That was recent form. That was, what, two, three weeks ago, I believe, we cast to that one. And they were shattered and shook on land. I'm going to be honest, okay? Then you see Reason Gaming unfolded. You can see there's two players here standing in. And then you added the fact that Radix, you know, it's the first land for Border Master, the first land for Artists. On paper, Endpoint should be winning this event with ease. But the fact that Reason Gaming have subbed in Fry, one potentially one of the best players in the UK, definitely top three. And Luzza, another player up there. Endpoint has some real skill to uh, fight back versus. Oh, yeah. This is a hard match to contend against in terms of raw firepower. But they themselves have upgraded their line. You've got a good players that are actually coming into the mix. Mighty Max oh. being one of them that's always been a staple in terms of the UK scene. Fantastic deagle work being done. So Max will get the initial frag. YNC as well takes down Cray. And it's all on Luzza here, spamming away with the Famous. Switch out to the flashbang, try and keep him a little bit dazed and confused about the actual play that he's bringing to the table. Immy tiptoeing towards him, peeks out, gets the first kill. It's all on YNC. No kit though, 7 HP, one shot for the CZ. He can literally do a drive-by here, and the round is over. Now the bombs take too far down, I believe, so there you have it. YNC will land the headshot to Luzza. It's going to go one-to-one. -one. The Deagles from Mighty Max, hopefully we're going to see a re replay of that. On the train. Okay, so he goes up, spams the Deagle, gets the second shot as well. And that's going to open up the round for Endpoint and grant them the chance to bring it back. And Lars with the one versus one over the kit. Definitely made it difficult. One to one would be the scoreline now. So we're going to run number three. Reason Game, we're going to go for the counter force by four sets of CZs. Deagle onto Luzza. No kits there for the CT side. So if the bomb is planted, it could go south. Oh, nades coming out early. Fasher tagged down 43 HP as they do go for the fast, aggressive burst out on the B-bomb site. Cinder is there, arms to the teeth, but dealing damage with that CZ as he will get a critical strike off. Takes down two men. Max, though, he's armed. He knows how to kick up a fuss as he will get one, nearly the second, but overpowered by Thomas. And it's all left on the hands of the in-game leader, Immy. Great. Not expecting Immy to still be a white horse there. And now, is there a chance? One if 20 on the clock. No utility, though. Just has the AK in hand. It's the weight. Goes to the grey chain piece. What's that one player? But they have a close range to Thomas. Thomas, in my books, easily the best season player in the UK. Playing versus him with it. It's absolutely phenomenal. For the real star of the show was Cinder. They're two crucial anchor kills towards the B bomb. So it's a one versus three towards B. And Cinder pulls out ahead there, the one, well, getting two kills before dying. And there you have it. We saw the counter force by win for reason. And now another force by count for Endpoint. It seems like the momentum of this game is a lot faster than we saw in CX versus Radix. Yeah, very high octane. Trading back and forth right now. No one able to link two rounds together just yet since the initial opener. Deagles, though, from Fasha. Can he step up to the mark and try and match what Mighty Max did? Scout up to Amy, trying to see if he can get a tag here and allow these Deagles to work in unison. <laughs> He tags with the scout, one shot from the Deagle will take him down, but also one shot to the head of the Deagle will do the same. It's going to be the two versus three now. The last is no HP, there's still a chance here for Endpoint. So 2v3. 
The bomb is down a bit of an awkward spot. Stanley, arm of a deagle. Now Stanley, very effective as well. Oh. Natural talent, but he isn't going to be able to show that. Bested by his brother in arms, his ex teammate in Fry there, as YNC as well with the trades. Already a double kill for Yannick. What more can he achieve? It's the hat trick. Leaves him with one minute left on the clock. But Cinder was ready. Did good economical damage, though. In the three versus one, he may lose, but he has killed two players. You can see how low that money is right now for recent game. He might even see a counter force again from Empire. They might force again. It wouldn't even be a bad call at that point. The reason you go for the force again is because CT side's money is low. You can see zero, $900 onto two players. That's it. If you win that round, three to two, you force a force buy. Three to three, you win that force versus the force buy, sorry. And then you force an eco. Three to four, you have the advantage. Nevertheless, though, Cinder's going to be bopping up these kids. Oh, this is Cinder that I want to see as well. Cinder, he looks like he's kind of not had as much form recently. Seems like he's definitely started to slip off. But now, back in the driving seat, full throttle as he mows them down. He does indeed. Round number six now, four to one. Three round advantage for Reason Gaming. It's going to be Eco once again for Endpoint. They went for the force buy, but instead they want orbs and they want utility. Imi as a cooler, very tactical. He wants to call the smoke setups, the set strats. He's not someone to go for the... We saw CX, for example, on T-side on, on Mirage. Just go for force buy after force buy with no real motive or no real guideline as to what they want to do within the round. Whereas Imi isn't like that. Let's see though if the Ecos will come back to haunt them. Or actually having the extra utility will be the silver liner they need to pull through in these gun rounds. Cinder here. Once again with the aggressive stance, switching it up as he charges his way through. The smoke will block him off. Didn't want to overextend too far. Just a few pot shots makes his presence known. This also forces Endpoint to believe the fact he can go for that aggressive play now. They're going to be scared about that. Kevlar, only into three players here. Max again with that eagle. The chance of him replicating that play is probably 1 in 50, I imagine. 1 in 30, maybe. Probably not going to see it for the whole rest of this best of two. There's a three, sorry. So, if he spots that one player. He goes from headshots, he's quite landed though. Still the five is three now, but YNC does trade back eventually. Oh, here come the shots though. Stanley in the rear will get one. Taps away. It's actually oh. Fasher with a double dig. That is huge from Fasher. That could be the silver line they need to actually win this round. Cinder. Oh, struggles in a situation where you expect him to land the shot. Stanley is not going to let him get away with that. The skill on these two teams, every single round is on a knife edge, knife's edge. One player can step up, get a massive 2K with these pistols, and suddenly the round is as good as done. Four to two, recent gaming force now to go for another force buy. Use everything they have in the bank into this one. Loves with the orb, no armor though. Stick a last kind of need to What a shatter though, after he's been tagged by HE grenades or bullets to the, to the chest, sorry, without Kevlar. See though, could be the slow, not even a slow default. Not going towards Ali. We've got one player towards team main. As the holding from aggression, lots of towards up and needs to get that frag. That was crucial. The fact he doesn't get it pretty much seals the deal here for endpoint. 4v5. As they make their play in towards B. Heavy re aggression here from reason. You can see that rotates come out. They are ready for this and expect it to be a full commit towards B. Fasher with a little pop flash. He is going to try and go straight out. Thomas is there playing on the close angle. Fasher does walk out. Shot in the chest though. Wounded and executed. Imi will trade it back with a headshot at the very least. So it's a 4v3. Imi keeping the paint train rolling as well as he gets that follow up frag on Cinder. They might just have to save it. Four versus two. No kits. Four HP onto Fry. They will just save Cray. If you can get an exit kill here, try and retrieve an AK, bring it into the next round. That'd be great. But as soon as he shoots his CZ, can he give away his location? The strict B play there from Endpoint. Too much to handle there. Lazar, I said it before, he had to get that kill towards B up. As soon as he died, the round was as good as done. And right now, Cray is trying to keep this place as close as he can to the bomb. So when it explodes, they die with it. Let's get the taps off. But Imi was just a little bit too hot to handle there. So it is on Fry. Fry seems like he should be able to stay alive. Max is hunting him. Is he going to find him? As he goes around 4 HP on Fry. It's not going to take much for Max to kill him. Oh, close, but no Cheers. cigar. <laughs> now Fry, one has an AK into the next round. He has AK. OK. AK, flash smoke, Kevlar head armor, onto potentially the best rifle in the UK. Yes. <laughs> So, let's see if he can work some magic here. Can throw over his CZ as well to Thomas. And to 
Thomas is so prolific with that weapon as well. But let's see, though. Empire that's success towards B. Are they going to try to replicate that? Or are they going to hedge their bets towards A instead? Ooh. Cinder still keeping it going. Works as well. Takes down Immy. Donning the AWP. Now, Immy. I wonder how much we're going to see with that as well. Obviously, it's still the primary AWP, I'm assuming. Even yep, with this yes. lineup, still going to be rocking that role. Yeah, he seemed a little bit frustrated. He was forced into it with the previous edition of the lineup. With this, maybe now a little bit more accustomed to it. He, he did look very good. Imi wanted to AWP, and he was good with it. Yeah, he was very effective. Four versus four. No kits right now for the CT side. It's the Eco, remember. Lars with the Deagle towards Great Train. Doesn't land the headshot, though. Gets the body tag, but it's quite enough. You can see three players now from Reason Gaming forced to rotate in. Fry one has to really step up in this scenario. As the push comes through, they've secured the site. Let's see what they can do, though. Waiting away now. All they have to do is hold these angles, wait for the push to come towards them. They have the GG Monotops as well, so essentially they can set the Bomber Blaze, deny any defuse to come through as they're just waiting out. YNC with one shot, but Stanley gets traded back. Cray as well. An absolutely outrageous the pistol Monotops. shot as he finds it. Max pushing down rather than committing to the Molly. Will find the frag though, but now just has to stay alive. Come on in the bomb as well. Max has won the round. Fry realizes such and has to get out of there. Once again, try and scavenge the AK, but Max will deny it. It's an expensive round of that once again. How much money does Endpoint have at this point? 7,000 across the board, so they're still okay. They can still afford to buy up just in case things do go south once again. Nevertheless, though, into round number nine. Into round number nine. It's going to be four to four. 3,000 across the board right now for Reason Gaming as they're going to be buying the upgraded pistols. Kevlar only for Thomas and Cray. They do have a diffuse kit as well. Thanks to the kills, they've got those USBs. They can't afford Kevlar, can't afford to upgrade the pistols once again. But already again towards the B bomb site. Actually, that's towards Team Main. So, first player's dead, Fry one's down. And now, in the 4 versus 5, it's looking likely that Endpoint gets another round. The push coming through. They're setting themselves up once again. I mean, they found so much success towards the B bomb site. It makes sense they're going to go for rinse and repeat. It's like in wrestling, mate. When someone's ankle's a bit, a bit hurt, you know, what you keep oh, doing? You keep, yep. keep giving them digs in the ankle continuously and eventually you win. But Thomas gonna try and strike first. We'll find the initial headshot for the CZ. Ready oh. for more as well. Thomas is running away with a round. They keep flooding towards him. Eventually Immy is ready, taps him down with a sidearm that provides a nice little addition into the round. They have secured the site. No commit to the plant just yet. It's Cray and Luzza left. Two CZs in play. No utility, one kit of armor. Max taking on Cray. Will seal the deal. And it's going to, well, should go 5 to 4. So far, so good for Endpoint. They were 4-1 down. But they managed to bring this one back. Emi with the AWP as well. This is another thing that's crucial, which I forgot to mention. Luzza died with the AWP upper and gave the AWP for free to Emi. And now he's the one able to wield it and try to get some efficiency with it. Fry won the lead the charge right now in terms of the kills in the server. 10 kills for him after 10 rounds. So, so far, so good from him. But this is the big one. Endpoint, if they win this one, make it 6 to 4. Reset, not reset the money, but break the money again. Play win versus the half buy. 7 to 4. And at that point, you've already got enough rounds you need on your CT side. Oh, Ooh, there's the tag, but not quite a frack. The trade come through as well as Fry is able to strike on Imi. Molotov setting the entire of Pop Dog ablaze as well. So they have to fall back. They can't really try and go for an aggressive pick. They do indeed. Lotter is low, though. And actually, it was Fry wants to get the kill. So still, they don't know there's two ops in play. And actually going towards the B-bomb site is so smart because those ops and the retake are going to be fairly useless to see that what Stanley can do getting aggressive towards backline. Oh, Stanley depends on timing. They spot him out. He gets the tag. He's going to try and reposition as well. Thomas caught on the reload. Will strike against him. Finds the initial kill here. Really tries to reset the flow of the round. Nice HG. Could get the kill. Fry. Tag down to 48. Tries to back off, just hoping to stay alive. Push coming round, Stanley's just running away with a round. It's so ridiculous that one man can have such a huge impact. Bomb has been planted towards B as well. And Fry still debating where these T's are. Can maybe try kill YNC and save the orb, and he will do just that. Actually, I believe he's going to go for this one. He has the key, has the smoke as well, but he's not going to spot Max. Max towards Oil Train is pretty much done. Job. And there you have it. The fact that Fry one was low HP as well means one bullet to the chest will take him down. Max sees him jump on top of him. On top of him. On top of the train. Eventually we'll take him down. Round number 11 now. It's four to six. And the reason this is a big round because you can see the money again for reason. Six to four. 
Another CZ buy. Yes, these rounds have been close. You can't really predict too much in these rounds. But it should go 7 to 4. And at that point for Empire, they have enough rounds already on their T side train. Yeah, this is a good T side so far. Obviously, could have been even better. Let's see if that is going to be the case. Look at Fasher. Wow, this is pretty cheeky. Unfortunately for him, though, his teammate in Yannick has gone down as Fry will be able to capitalize against him. He's in the back line. Thomas as well, playing around the smoke. Lots of really smart, just slow, methodical play here coming out from Reason. Just holding back, waiting for the push to come towards them. It falls to a 3v3. Bomb being planted. They're not watching the bomb. Oh, they are, but the player from Ali now surely creates should have an impact into this one. I don't think Fasher should expect him. No kill though for the CT side. They're trying to just get as many kills as possible. The seeds at a range, you can't really do too much with that one. So inaccurate. It's real power. Is at close range, we spam it. So as predicted, seven to four be the scoreline now. Three run advantage for Empon on the T side train. It's just, well, not really going down to the wire. These rounds have been fairly one sided, apart from obviously the crazy egos. The buy rounds have been fairly close in favor of Empon. Yeah, it's been pretty good so far. Obviously, once Empon found their foot in, they've never really looked back. It's been a stable up and up. Round number 12 now. What's the buy going to be like for the CT side? Fry 1 and Laza both orping. Laza on 4 kills. Fry 1 on 14. This is one of the issues when you bring in a superstar mix. Essentially, Thomas, Fry 1, Laza, great players, but is there enough space? Is there enough space in the server for all these positions they want to play? Obviously, people are going to have to sacrifice their roles and their CT positions. And right now, it seems like some of the players are uncomfortable. End point. Gonna be going for the B play here. The smoke down lower means they can flash and execute. They can Molot Molotov off to what, uh, where Cinder is right now towards Summit, backside. Smoke off the gap between trains so they can cross so they don't get off as they cross. And they can smoke down lower. And they can do the one-way smoke as well that lands in between the tracks and the ledge there. And that's, that allows the orbs to peek over it and hold connector in a one-way. Double orb setup though. One big on Lazar, one on Frey. Now Lazar more of your slow, methodical orper. Knows how to play his angles very fast. Fry, though, ferocious, wants to take the fight towards you, but he's always very composed. It'll be interesting to see how those weapons aid them. Thomas, blissfully unaware of what's occurring as Yannick gets the entry. Imi as well does damage with the AWP on towards Cinder. The double AWP setup is still in play, but it's not really found any success at all. It's basically been a massive overinvestment for what they've achieved with it. They push in as well. Cray trying to aid his teammate, but Stanley will eliminate him. It's just Fry and Luzza remaining. I'm not going to be surprised if they just have to save now. Fry falls. Luzza has to. Does indeed. He wants to open to the next round. Eight to four. Reason Gaming looking lost on their CT side. We'll get some extra kills here, but that's really all he'll be able to obtain. 8-4, to four. Endpoint now doubling the rounds of Reason Gaming from a 4-1 deficit. They've managed to win seven on the trot, I believe, seven or six in a row. Pretty crazy as well how... Yeah, seven, seven in a row. You've got basically the battle of the brother in arms, really, with Stanley and Fry. I mean, obviously... That's a good point. ...played yeah. together for so long, and then both the key real young impact players that were on method the method lineup that was without a doubt the most dominant uk team it's a good that's time. a good point to bring up the fact that fry one and stanley played on the best uk team for months and months and months back on the order fm eventually they'll split up the fast as i rush trying to counter the opposite see if they can do it oh fry giving a the old that's one a a hug. Oh, very awkward eventually stanley will get the double kill as it all goes a bit wrong but it's a 2v4 they've secured the site they have control, Yannick on one HP, Stanley on six. They just have to stay alive here. Do not get involved in any firefights. Thomas might just go for the save here. They've lost eight in a row now, which means they can drop over two and fours and buy up into the round number 14. But of course, they may just save for the final round, try to play for 10-5 and win that T-Pistol, make it 10-8. to eight. And from there, try and get some revitalized life back into this one. Get themselves some energy, really. Something to allow them to make a difference. Now, we expected to this be... Well, we expect to be a very close match. A bit of a slobber knocker. It <laughs> always tends to be with Endpoint when they play. They really seem to struggle when it comes to closing out games or getting a good start. This time around, four rounds go to World Reason. And ever since then, Endpoint haven't looked back. Nine rounds on the trot. Looking like they want to continue that. 
I mean, there's potential we see him go through of an 11 4 half. They're CT half as well. They've got a lot of strength when it comes to CT side setups. Yeah, definitely. Frame point as well. On the T side, I mean, it's basically just rinsing your practice. Yeah. Going through the, you can see they've already got the uh, SK rush outside. That's been working. That's used to counter the double orbs. You smoke sandwich, you smoke electric, and you push, and you smoke back green, sorry, and you push the orbs back, and then you just swarm them on the site. Sinner here with some aggression towards upper. This might be the change of pace they need to try and catch endpoint of guard. Amy, let's go for the scope peak. As he wants to try and go for this contact face, see if he can find any initial frags here as he works his way around, but decides to second guess it. Doesn't really want to run the risk. Now, B, they've had so much success on this bomb site. Cinder hasn't really had the confidence to go for the aggressive face he was prior going for into these rounds as well. He's just playing it fairly standard. This time it could come back to bite him as well. Peeks out and Stanley overpowers him. Once again, Fremp put on the T side of man advantage. It's going to be a 2-2 setup right now for the CT side. Two towards A, two towards B. Thomas going to be going for round two versus Stanley here. Mighty Max trying to kill towards outside. It's going to be the still one-man advantage, though. But Thomas is low. 3v4. In this scenario, they do have a lot of potential. It seems like they actually do want to go towards the A-pop side as well. Take pop dog control, work their way in. Fascia, him falling here, really could come back to bite them, depending on their next move. Cray. Gets Max low, will capitalize against him. Immy strikes with the orb, but Immy somehow gets the second frag. One versus two, Thomas is low. And you can see the call comes out. It's spotted and the shot there from the PT-50 from Immy will take him down. Two quick shots from him. And a great play will mean a great amount of rounds on this T side. Another four spike coming in from Reason Gaming and all, it's all really fallen flat. As we go into the final round to the first half, four to 10, a six round advantage of the T side which is definitely uncommon. Cindy with the shotgun now towards B. Once again, trying to see if he can change it. This time, I don't think it's really going to prevail. MP9 there for Luzza. As the early smoke and flashbangs come out, Imi finds the first again onto Thomas. Imi as well. I mean, he's not an orper, but he, uh, he definitely knows how to will one. He's just running through everyone. It's ridiculous. A double kill already, one being a wall bang. Max finds another kill on towards Fry. It's just Cinder left. He's got the blue spruce, the, uh, the auto shotty. But what can he do with it? Nothing. It's wine secret in there as well. That would have been even better. Just for the mental reset. So, so far, so good. Run out for endpoint. See their coach there, Jakey. Trying to give as much input as he can as we go into the second half of the train. It's actually a really good point as well. Jake, the only actual coach for any of the lineups that's here. Jakey, obviously, very statistical minded. He's done a lot for Endpoint in terms of the back end stuff. Really tries to help them with heat maps. I mean, the brain of Jakey, he puts a lot of dedication in. You can see that shine through. I feel like he is going to be one of the reasons as well why, with this lineup with Remotemus Raw Firepower and so much untapped potential in Immy in terms of how smart he is with in game leading, Jakey is that next step to allowing him to further that and get more out of these players. Yeah, Immy said as well, he doesn't really want a, an IGL that is tactical minded as well. And I feel like Jake obviously respects Imi's mind for the game. Obviously, Imi would always overpower him in that sense. But for Jake, you need to be some a vessel. Like, it's almost like an analyst, really. Yeah. A vessel for information to feed and relay to Imi so that he can use it. He provides a lot more on the back end. If something's not working or they need to understand how a strat will work better for them, Jake will do all of that stuff. He's been very effective. I feel like he really has put a lot of time in. I think him and Ross from XL have been yeah, the two I, coaches I for me that I think have really pushed the boat. I up. definitely think Ross is the best coach in the UK. Um, but of course, he is definitely the highest paid one of that. Best beard as well. Of course, you respect the beard. Oh yeah, lovely guy. Push coming out though, is they want to try and take control towards the A-bomb set. Let's see what can happen Woo! here. Fascia started off with a bang. Max as well, going to give a little bit of the old Max special. Immy will go down to Thomas. They're trying to aggress on towards Stanley here. Thomas switching out to a USP. They've got the site control. They have got the bomb down. YNC and Fascia doming everyone. And it's all on Laza. What could Joe Ducky loose do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. 12 to 4. And um, the first game, Jack, took a while, didn't it? It was, it yeah, was a slow, slow burner. It was burner. a slow burner. It took a while. Do you know what? The lovely guys at Endpoint are pretty much putting us back on track. 
You know what, guys? <laughs> there might have been a few delays, but we'll we'll win. Don't worry. <laughs> See you in the final. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh, I thought it was going to be a best of three, did you? <laughs> oh wait. Round number 17, though. 12, 2, 4, 8 round advantage right now for Empon on the CT side. Now on the favoured side with an eight round lead. Won the pistol. It's looking fairly uh, fairly bleak. That's an understatement for reason gaming right now, especially because this should go 13 to 4. They did get the, the uh, bomb damage, which they can buy up into round number 18. But then again, at that point, it's going to be 13 to 4 and a 9 round advantage for Empon on the CT side train. Yeah, looking like it is going to be the end point. Of reasons tournament run right now is uh, struggling. Tom is going to go down to Mighty Max as well. Molotov goes in towards Pop. I actually re smoke it. Because they're just going to wait it out. Not going to use that Molly just yet. Fry has a bit of support. It's going to be a free man push out of Pop. There's a backstab in Stanley. And Max is going to be ready for this. UMP as well. Even if he only gets one frag here, it'll be an easy kill to come out. Fasha timing's awkward, but he still finds the frags. 13 to 4 now as we head into round number 18. The buy round though from the T side. Let's see if they can finally show us some prowess. How many rounds is it right now? Is it 12 rounds? Can you press tab, please, observer? Shout out to Misty. Yes, Misty, are you listening to me or not? No, okay. Apparently we don't have an observer. Cool. I think it's 12 rounds in a row. I just wanted to see it. You know, some people are picture learners, do you know what I mean? Yeah, they got the they got the initial 4-1. It was four, yeah, it was yeah four they got one, the reset, so and then since then they've rounds, won yeah. every round on the trot. Stan spots the players towards B for a reason. Game around right now, they know they, have the, they know they have the firepower advantage trying to exploit that by going off of heaven. Oh, they're going to be pushing their way out. Stanley's ready for it with the MP9 as he just starts to find the frags. Luz are going to get dropped. Cinder as well goes down. Thomas, the only one that's T side that's found anything just yet, and it's not enough to work with. One kill isn't going to win you the game. Thomas, he tries to get more, but he will fall. 14 to 4. 10 round advantage now for M1 on train. Next map is Mirage. That's Reason's pick. But then again, the final map is Cash Jack. One of Endpoint's best maps as of late. Could potentially. Well, I don't think there's much potential there for Reason Gaming to take Cash. Then again, I thought there was a chance for the train and or Cash. I thought that Endpoint win Mirage, but you never know. It's going to be the force by coming in from Reason Gaming. Scout upgraded pistols as well across the board. But obviously, what can you really do in this scenario? They're lacking the firepower, they're lacking the rounds as well, and the money. And already they're lacking the manpower as Luzza already goes down early. Seems like they're lacking momentum as well, just confidence to go for the normal style of CS you're expecting to see at these players. And the thing is as well, what's something touched on the desk is the fact he said there's so much talent on this roster for a reason that he feels they're just going to overpower them. But when you've got that much talent, you don't have anyone to lead you. Yeah, exactly. There's no in-game leader. So, as we wait for Reason Gaming to eventually end the inevitable. But as I say, though, two early kills onto Stanley and Mighty Max. Fry one as well as the headshot onto Imi. This could be the two versus two now as the retake begins. They have kits. No smokes, just a flashbang and one letter, though. Y and C going round. It's two and four's in play. Just tap down, but can't quite connect the shots just yet. So Cinder just hiding. There is no Molotov. They have a smoke. But it's not really going to help them in this scenario. So to win this round, it's looking unlikely. The backstab coming in from Fasha as well. Smoke goes out to try and toy with them and delay ever so slightly, but Fasha catches him off guard, and it's all on Fry. Fry in the elevated angle, perched up like a hawk, watching over. But he won't be watching anything anymore, because he's dead. He is indeed, Jack. 15 to 4 now, match point, and M point have 11 match points to play with. Bomb to go down, so Reason Gaming potentially going to have a 4 by 3,000, yeah, 4,000 towards the board, so they can vibe into this one. But this has been a very one-sided affair here, Jack. Round number 20. 11 round advantage. Endpoint. They're going to close this one out. We're going to be seeing Mirage. Now, the question is, if you're recent gaming, are you already thinking of Mirage? Yeah. I are you trying to forget about this map? I think it's so awkward. You've got to just take it as a best of one. It's it's really hard to call how this is going to affect them mentally. The thing is, with Reason right now as well, just as they're starved for any kind of ideas, they look like a rundown fairground, mate. There's just not a lot to go on. Not a lot of rights. Trying to do some damage though as they are hammering away. Nothing really going in their favor. You get the initial frag, but look at the amount of damage that has been dispersed between them. Five versus four. Fry one and Luz are low though. Stanley went huge the last time. Reason Gaming tried to go anywhere near the B bomb, so. Question is though for Reason Gaming lacking the structure and the tactical depth. 
without, well, without the strats, basically. And they've only got one smoke as well onto Cinder. It's probably going to be used down lower. Smoke down lower, flush out, and just basically roll the dice and see who headshots who first. Roll the dice once or twice. As they wait now. 40 seconds remaining on the clock here. It's really going to be pushed tight depending on how they play this one. They realize that they're risking losing the opening map off the back of this round. Instantly traded back. It's a 4v4 as they equalize the battle of attrition. Fry making his play in towards B. Needs to get a beautiful frag off. Has to try and snipe someone down to give him a bit more momentum to play with. Ideally, but Max elevated angle. Oh, Max Angle is this bit of work. Emmy as well coming into effect. Stanley with the AWP this time around. Trying to find the flicks, but can't quite connect them. They have 20 seconds to plant the bomb and win this round. Cray kicks it into the second gear as he will be able to run his way through with the AK. But he couldn't quite slay today. It's all on Fry. And Fry is down. Endpoint get the win. They open up with a ridiculously fast game. The reverse of a slobber. 16 to 4.